Hey everybody and welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're going to be talking about DC's Black Label line. Hey everybody and welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host Brent Casina and today I wanted to talk about DC's Black Label line. Specifically, what is going on with Black Label? I want to know, and I feel like we're not getting any answers. But before we dive into it, let me just please ask you to do one thing. Please subscribe. Helps me out, helps the channel grow, lets you know when I drop new videos. Hit that bell if you're really crazy. Now, DC Black Label, what is it? Originally, we all thought it was going to be this. This is Batman Damned. This is the first release of the Black Label line. This is the hardcover. Uh, it was released in uh, single issues, about the same size, like the actual paper size of what was in the single issues is the same size here, this is just in a hardcover format. And it's this really nice um, presentation with like this semi-see-through um, dust jacket and then the wraparound cover, like the kind of presentation you would expect when you're buying a deluxe edition. And it was all advertised as, hey, the Black Label books are going to be bigger in width and, you know, just this, this size, which they're now calling the Prestige Plus format because they've decided to abandon making the Black Label line entirely this size and let people put out things like Three Jokers as part of the Black Label line. Um, it's, it's real here, right in the small, this little Black Label here. Um, but this is not the same size as this. Look at this. Um, so yeah, the paper is bigger on the Prestige Plus, it's got more width, and for, you know, this is just a regular size hardcover, like it's the same size as your standard trade paperback, you know, so it's, it's no different, and Three Jokers came out in this standard size, so I don't really know what the decision is between, um, you know, why one story merits one or the other, like, Reading Batman Damned, I think it definitely benefits from the larger format because uh, you have Lee Bermejo doing this amazingly detailed and intricate artwork and these beautiful colors and the paints and just the ink wash and all the different stuff he's doing in this book really benefits from that size. However, one thing I will criticize um, Batman Damned for is it's very kind of light on dialogue, but that's the story, right? So when they announced the Three Jokers is coming to Black Label, that's me bumping the camera, I figured, great, it's going to be in this oversize. And then, nope, it comes out. And what is it? It's the standard like nine-panel grid that Jeff Johns was doing with um, Gary Frank over on Doomsday Clock. And it's just standard comic book pages, you know, more dialogue. Again, I think that's the writer in the story. But I thought, personally, I would have preferred to see Three Jokers in a wider format in this bigger format because it's was supposed to I, I didn't like the story that much um, you can see my review on the channel it was supposed to have an impact on the Batman line on you know the universe and answer this question of who is the Joker or why are there three of them and it didn't really quite do that but I think it would have benefited because Jason Fabok is such a great artist of having this bigger size now Jason Fabok I believe is all digital so him drawing at uh, you know, you could say like, oh, it's more work for the artist, Brent. Well, for Jason Fabok, who I believe is all digital, is it more work if he can zoom in and zoom out and kind of draw things at scale as he wants to? Arguable. Uh, Lee Bermejo is not, so he definitely put in the work in his art to make that bigger. But, you know, you got other guys like Septon Sedgwick, who did Harleen, wrote it and drew it himself with the colors, doing some amazing things with, you know, there's plenty of dialogue in this one. Like, this is well worth your read. Uh, this is three issues, just like Batman Damned was. And the benefit is it's in this bigger size. It's in this nice, big, kind of wider, taller format. This Prestige Plus format, as they're calling it. Um, and it does a whole lot. I mean, I don't know what it does for the story. I think you, yeah, could you squish it down or something? Not now, because it's been drawn. But, you know, he could certainly probably push this... Um, you know, squeeze it down a little bit, but I think some things like if having four panels across a page is more difficult uh, in a smaller size, uh, regular comic book size, than it is in this Prestige Plus. You know, and when you really get a spread in here, which there aren't many, 
but you do get like it is a larger spread or even the single play page splashes are larger you can do more um, there's more room to to spread out and really show off your art and also it's got this really nice dust jacket effect and I did a whole video on this review as well so you can check that out on the channel but then you have the other things that I feel like should be part of the black label line you got things like deceased dead planet which just came out uh, a month or two ago I've got reviews of that and unkillables uh, and the regular deceased on the channel as well if you want to check those out but this does not have black label on it this is just a regular hardcover this is just a mini series or whatever and I think maybe you know Tom Taylor is, t is telling his story I don't feel like anything was cut out or whatever because it's not part of the black label line it's definitely about zombies and it's definitely gory and violent and stuff like that maybe you could just stick a black label sticker on it and and call it a day if he's not really like affecting but again I don't really understand why some things are black label and some things aren't this is definitely a mature reader storyline why not put it in the mature reader line which is what black label is right that was the whole idea of to be unencumbered although you said unencumbered and uh, Libra Mayo and Brian Azzarello threw in Batman's Wang in there in the first issue and you guys freaked out and flipped out apparently it was okay until the day it came out and then everybody started backtracking um, so unencumbered nah, not quite you know um, haven't really seen any like major um, f-words or anything as far as I know or like sex or like really brutal violence I think the brutalest thing that I've read so far is that uh, the dead planet stuff then meanwhile you got stuff that's black label by default so like Batman White Knight it came out before black label was a thing and then they said okay well we're gonna print it and we're gonna stick it in the black label line so that it can be part of the line or whatever so this is the White Knight deluxe edition um, it is not it was drawn by Sean Gordon Murphy and it's it's a regular size format but they thankfully put out a deluxe edition for us to read then the sequel comes out after black label has been started and it's got a black label little insignia here but it, again I guess the way Sean Murphy wants to do it is the standard comic book format it came out of single issues or whatever but it's not um, it's not um, the prestige plus size but what's weird though is if like these came out really close together in terms of the hardcovers right so why not put out a deluxe edition of White Knight next to the deluxe edition of Curse of or you know put a deluxe edition of Curse of the White Knight next to the deluxe one of White Knight you just put out and make that you know the black label thing like any black label hardcover we uh, put out is going to be a, a deluxe edition trim size if it's the standard format because when you put it next to something like Superman Year One which is a black label from Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. which is okay but at least on the bookshelf you know it's it's pretty close in terms of like length of the spine right it's pretty close to being the same height um, I want to say it is and the trim size like the the size of the paper at least height wise is the same if not the width right so why not put everything out as a deluxe if you're doing a hardcover for a black label book like are you honestly telling me that Batman last man on earth couldn't have benefited from being a deluxe edition size you know like I mean this is the same one curse I grabbed the wrong one but this would have benefited from from being a little bit taller and doing a deluxe edition that way certainly um, and, and this one certain I, I didn't really understand why this was a, a black label book either if it's the the last Batman story ever told and it ties into um, Capullo and Snyder's run which I kind of really didn't feel it didn't uh, didn't really feel that it did let me rephrase that a little bit you know and you didn't have Batman like doing anything he's not doing in Dark Knight's Metal or anything like that or you know it's just like the structure and format so what is a black label book like what is it specifically is it unencumbered storytelling because if that's the case I haven't really seen anybody like push the edges of it right so you're not getting anything to me in these black label books that you're already not getting in a regular DC comic book for example let me point this difference this is a little bit different but like a movie rating system right you have um, movie ratings you got PG-13 and you got R Wolverine movies let's take those for example because those are the ones that went from PG-13 to R you have the first two movies you have 
Wolverine Origins, you have The Wolverine, and that also had an unrated cut, which is a little bit more violent, and then you had Logan, right? So think about Wolverine Origins and Wolverine, and any of the X-Men movies too, these aren't really, like you don't see him stab anybody. You go to Logan, full R rating, yeah, there's not a lot of sex or anything like that, so you're not pushing that boundary, but you're definitely doing the real violence that Wolverine would do if he's got metal claws in his hand cutting people up. You're seeing that, it's there, it's, that to me feels like, okay, this is the unencumbered vision of what this character really is and what he really does. Um, you know, the unencumbered vision of Batman, this is just Snyder and Capullo's Batman. They just said, all right, well, instead of six issues, do it in three double-sized uh, issues, and we're going to charge more for it and make more money because we're going to stick it as part of the Black Label line. But are you going to have to change the way you draw or anything like that? No, not, not you know. So unencumbered, I don't think so. I think it, in this case, it was just a sticker. Um, black Label for Superman Year One? I don't, I don't really know. Like, is it thematic? This certainly could have been told, um, you know, in a regular regular format like there's nothing special about Superman year one that makes it a black label book as opposed to a regular DC comic book but I think the trim size definitely helps like look at this art I mean certainly the bigger tall like the height of the paper helps as well but I mean you know this spread would feel I don't think you would get this little side panel on a regular size comic book that like the regular trim edition or, or even the the ratio right the changing of the ratio is what adds to the art, not necessarily the size of the paper. Um, but this is just like a standout page for me. You can do weird, you know, not weird things with panels, but John Romita Jr. is drawing a little bit wider than he than he probably normally would. Um, but story-wise, does this really necess necessitate a black label sticker? Like, is it for mature readers only? No, not really. Um, I. You know, even the, the White Knight, Curse of the White Knights, there's really nothing in there that's like makes it mature readers. So if you're gonna say Black Label is unencumbered storytelling or say that it's for mature readers, then like let's let it be for mature readers. I think they got scared when when Batman Damned had its um, bat laying out, which is not in this book. I have the, the real one over there. But it, you know, it's been edited out and all that stuff. So if you're gonna tell an un unencumbered Batman story, uh, you know that in have this graphic violence or nudity or themes whatever you think is here But like there's nothing in Batman damn that's not already in Anything else? I think the black label book that had the most f-words if you want to call it like oh Brent You're only complaining about language uh, I think the one with John Constantine the Hellblazer book with Derek Robertson on art. I think Tom Taylor wrote it um, Yeah, this was the the page there was a shadow here no shadow anymore um you know, okay, so you get to see Batman's butt, like, big deal. But, uh, there's not really anything unencumbered in these stories. Like, you could tell this in a regular DC book, the way that this is presented here, you know. I, I don't know what the standards are. So I don't really know what a black label book is. Like, if you're going to have a mature reader's line, let's put out some mature reader stuff. Uh, and really do some unencumbered storylines. If they're just gonna do black label on things that they skew older, or uh, because they do it in this prestige plus format size, then what's the point of the line? And I kind of feel like half of this too is because DC, you know, they started black label and then soon after black label started, there was the big shuffle of who's in charge, you know, Dan DiDio left, they did their reorganiz reorganizing, they moved to Burbank or whatever, Whatever it was at the time, there's like two or three of them in the last three years. Maybe the line, the editor line, you know, editor got removed or left or whatever. But there's no direction to it at all. And I would also say that like the the couple of black label stuff I've seen solicited wasn't exciting uh, in terms of like what this was. So when this got solicited, you said Azarello and Lieber Mayho on Batman. I was like, I'm in, that sounds exciting. He said Frank Miller's gonna do Superman with JRJR, cool. Um, that got exciting. You're gonna do a sequel to White Knight and call it Curse of the White Knight, I was already in. It's involving Azrael, a double in. Like, I'm excited. Um, Harleen certainly was not like, you know, doesn't get people's blood pumping. Um, 
you know, as much as Batman does, but the quality of the story was so phenomenal that it felt worthwhile, and it was like, this really was a good place to put this book. Um, you know, and Harley Quinn's kind of a big character herself. She's got a big following. Um, you know, cool. But then you start putting out, like, a Birds of Prey one-shot or a 100-pager or the um, Amanda Connor Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey stuff, and I'm like, I don't really know if this really, like, is... To me, this Black Label line, the way it started was like a things that would be DC's new evergreens, right? And and I feel like they were losing track of that. Uh, you had Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino come out with Joker Killer Smile. And I thought that was going to be a banger of a book. You know, Jeff Lemire writes some weirdly cool stuff sometimes. Andrea Sorrentino, you know, his art is phenomenal. I think it's a he. Um... And then the book comes out, and I'm reading it, and I'm going, this book isn't really a Joker. It's barely a Joker book. Batman's not even involved. Um, you know, and, and the story was... I didn't like it. That's why I did not get the hardcover for it. Did not like it at all. And I was like, I thought there was going to be more discerning uh, of quality of story or ideas here to put a Black Label sticker on it. Because to me... The Black Label sticker was the prestige sticker in terms of DC Comics. And it appears that that's no longer the case. So that's why I'm asking, what is Black Label? Is it your prestige line? Like, are you really proud of all these stories? Are you presenting to, to the readers as, hey, these are your new classics, the way that Crisis on Infinite Earths, Kingdom Come, Watchmen, Dark Knight Returns, all those things have been, you know, V for Vendetta. All those things have been your evergreens, like trade paperback graphic novels for a long, long time, and you're trying to get new ones, because um, Three Jokers is not it. Harleen is fantastic. Will it be an evergreen? I don't really think people sat up and took notice of it. Um, you know, Batman Damned, certainly, while beautiful, not really an evergreen story. There's not that much to it in terms of dialogue. It's more about the feeling and the mood and the art. Um, Superman year one came and went came and went people were not excited about this book when it came out because frankly the problem with it I think is that Superman is not really Superman until like the second book like let's get on with it he doesn't get his costume very early on there's a lot of stupid stuff with the army in Atlantis that you know while it does make a good story is it a good Superman story in terms of Earth 1 no like I want to say this is the first time you see Superman in his super suit. And look how far of the book you are. Like, this is all that happened before, and this is maybe the first time you've seen him in that suit. It's kind of ridiculous at that point. Yeah, that was the first time in book two. Um, and it's called Year One, like for crying out loud. So there's just a lot of things here. If it's unencumbered storytelling and it's going to be for mature readers, then let's put out some more mature reader stuff the way that you'd put out the Hellblazer. Um, graphic novel, three issue miniseries or whatever. Um, if it's just going to be a quality sticker, then let's put out some quality. Either one, pick one. If it's going to be about the trim size, then every book needs to be the prestige plus trim size and not your standard hardcover. Like, tell the artist, figure it out. If this is what you want to do and you're going to be unencumbered, we're giving you more pages, we're going to give you more width on the page, more height on the page, whatever. To do this so that you're not constrained the way you are in a regular size comic book. If this is unencumbered, then make every artist adapt and become unencumbered. Otherwise, what is the point of the line? So I, I really think the Black Label line is in a state of disarray. Uh, hopefully there's more stuff that's interesting that comes out. But uh, if they do, I really want it in this format. Give me this big prestige plus format it's beautiful it collects really nicely i really like picking up the hard covers but if the story's not there as well maybe don't call it a black label like make it big make it something to be proud of and go from there but if you can't do that i don't think it's worth the label of the black label if you're gonna put a stamp on it that you think are telling you're telling readers that this means something if you're gonna put that sticker on it make it big make it mean something and that should be the point of the black label line so, that's my thoughts and questions on the DC Black Label line as it stands today in 2021. 
What do you guys think it should be? Let me know down below in the comments. What was your favorite Black Label storyline so far? For me, I think it was Harley Quinn, uh, Har not Harley Quinn, Harleen, followed by Curse of the White Knight, even though that wasn't, was kind of adapted to be a Black Label. But for me, just in terms of originally Black Label, Harleen was the best one I've read so far. So let me know down below your favorite, and we'll see you guys next time in the Funny Pages.